everyone, and welcome back to Incidents, episode 19, covering Major Crimes, season 2, episode 19. Return to Sound of Part 1. Jerry Ryan come in as Philip Stroh's lawyer. She was not very we friendly. Love so much, I love Jerry Ryan. A bitch all the time. And a, she's girl, so if you do it. something good, you keep doing it because you make a lot of money. She brings us, she gets a note at her apartment that has a list of what was it, six names? Allegedly gets a note at her apartment. No, she said she got it at yeah. her apartment. Uh, of six names of boys who had gone missing. They were all around Russ's age. Just within a few miles of this clinic. They start connecting all the things. They find out the guy who was writing the letters is actually working at the clinic. They find that his mo his mom comes in because she's in jail too for like drug, drug and stuff. He tells them about how his how like she got with this guy and the guy was sleeping with the son and it was really really interesting and it was very they were mirroring off of Rusty's issue very 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 much. What are you doing right I'm now? I'm so hot right now. Oh, hot. Nope. Linda I'm Rothman was making Rusty's life a pain in the tuchus. And, it's uh... Really a living hell. Yes. Emma is in the courtroom as well. The only other person that we're familiar with that's in the courtroom comes a little later in the form of, uh, Chief Taylor. Who's actually doing it for Sharon because he, he wants Sharon's head in the game of what's going on with this catching the serial killer. And he knows the only way that's going to work is if she knows what's going on in the courtroom. The kid, and this isn't going to make sense to everyone, but it will for some people. Freddie from iCarly was playing the baddie who ended up, his name was Wade, the guy writing the letters. He was Wade's, like, boy toy at the, I at the moment. I show of hands how many people knew who that was. No, other people might. What? Just by pet. What? It's a Every little step she takes. It's the guy's, like, boyfriend. And I use that term very loosely. It's his boy toy. His boy toy, essentially. And Wade, the bad guy, tries to make a run for it. Grabs... I'm gonna keep calling... Calling him Freddy. He grabs Freddy, and... His name was Tyler, first of all. He grabs Freddy, <laughs> and he, like, holds a gun to his head, and essentially gets him as a... Hostage? Hostage. That's the word. We see a bullet go through Wade's head, and I'm like, oh, it was probably Fritz, you know, because he's done that before on the closer, and he's a good shot, and who was it? Provenza. It was Provenza! Linda Rothman, during the trial, insinuated that Rusty was doing all this because he was gay, and that he lied to the police about himself being gay, and he's like, well, they never asked me that, so how First can I all, lie about something they didn't ask me? What does that have to do with anything? Nothing. That was why... Uh, Emma called objection and the judge they had was the one who was a pain in the ass episodes ago about the guy uh, who killed the 19 year old and pushed her out the car that episode he really wanted to protect uh, Rusty in a sense that's the sense that I got he wanted to make sure he was okay the moment Rolfman started her stuff Bullshit. her shit uh, on Rusty being gay and how he was only doing things because he was having fun doing it and he was like, look, you need to stop, okay? Like, he totally laid her out. And that was the best. I'm glad they had that judge. They have this judge covering it. Yeah. I don't think it would have gone no. as well as it did. Her objecting to the question about the letters and it was her own question? <laughs> she had asked a question. Well, she asked a question a while before. Emma had brought up the point of these letters. And then the judge essentially said that they had nothing to do with the trial. But that it was a separate matter with a separate case. And if she objected to it, they would get they wouldn't be part of the case. If yeah, if they were excluded from the case and showed that they had no real significance in the case, they wouldn't have been able to use it. But she them, had obviously. to object to So okay. Hold on. So they they don't talk about it for a while and then all of a sudden she starts asking, Well, what else did you lie to the police about? And he says, Oh, I can't tell him. I can't tell him and he goes on and on. And then he says, About the letters I got Oh yeah, they can use them in the case. And she said objection, and he goes, "You're going to object to your own question." So the judge wasn't having any of it. So are in the case. Good and then at job, the end, Rusty. the last what two minutes? Yeah, two minutes. Two minutes. We have some that's rusty. All they had that's all they had. Entire episode for but Sharon it was so and Rusty. Worth it, though. it was worth it. Uh, was 
essentially he came out to her saying he was gay, but saying that he couldn't live with her. She wouldn't want him to live with her. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But he, she wouldn't want him to live with her because of he what was he like was. All She's of these like, other people. But I love it who you are. She knew he was gay because mom knows. She's like, I love you. I love every I'm going to take of all of you home. Rusty gets to go back home from that pigsty we call Provenza's apartment or house. His house. They live in a house. He lives in a house. What do we like about this one? Really? I have to ask it. It's on the paper. Everything. We like okay, everything. I liked everything, but I especially liked the moments between Provenza and Rusty this episode. Yeah. Like, especially when he was getting ready the to go tie. in and testify with the tie and Provenza good. telling him how proud he was of him. Because that's pretty much the only father, positive father figure that uh, Rusty has figure. <laughs> Grandfather figure. Yeah. More of that. Uh, that Rusty has had. And I mean, the entire squad has been like that, but especially Provenza has been that yeah. way for him. It's always been, like, this entire season, it's been, like, Provenza and Buzz Raider and, and Raider. Buzz. That's it. Okay. Emma was awesome this episode. Yes, go Got Emma. To see her in the courtroom. Which is her strong suit. When she's not in the courtroom, she can tend to be a little naggy at yeah, best. Annoying. Uh, not all the time, of course. Like, last episode, she did really well out of the courtroom. But this episode, we had her in her courtroom in her natural element. And she was fantastic. Oh, the last end. scene with Sharon and Rusty. The last two minutes. I always love the facial expressions that go on between, between Provenza and Ryder. Yeah. And when he shot that gun, Ryder was just, like, speechless. Like, he's all proud of himself, so of course he's not shutting up. No. That almost, in a sense, reminded me of the beanbag gun incident when yeah. she had shot and they were like, oh shit, like she can actually do something. Uh -huh. And then it was the same reaction to Provenza. Everyone was just like, what? That last scene and how it only lasted all of two minutes. I don't like that that was the only scene same with them, them this episode. When this episode was so major, it was so major to the show. <laughs> Exactly. Because it, like, brings everything to This episode brought everything together that's gone on this season. Past two seasons, though. With yeah, exactly. With this trial the last and two everything. seasons, and we only get, like, two minutes like, of seriously? Sharon and Rusty. But seriously, really? I mean, it was a really good scene, but really? Give us a little more. That's what they did last season, too, remember? Yeah, it was just her going, pat, right. pat, pat. And then, like, with the hog, um... In episode nine of season one. Yes, exactly. That lasted all of two seconds. And then, it's just, we want more of them. Just give us an episode of I do enjoy how he's actually showing emotion, emotion around and her. And he's the one initiating it. I think yeah. that's a, a huge deal with him. I think he's finally come to terms with the fact that he actually loves yeah. this woman. Yeah. And but he doesn't have to. His mom he's going to have. Yeah, he doesn't have to, like, hide anything. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Maybe that's what he meant by, like, maybe his his mom, Sharon Beck, would insinuate that he was wrong for having feelings or something like that. Mm -hmm. Never I think know. she probably would always shoot him down. Like, if he was, like, upset, be like, yeah, get over it. Exactly. But Sharon is, you know, a good mom. So we get to see that. I really enjoy that. It really wasn't much. No. Not at all, because they did all... Even the directing, the cinematography that went into this episode. When was Rusty was walking up to the stand, and how, yeah. it was so good. Yeah. All of it, really. Uh, the way they brought every little piece back together, and it all made sense. That was a big deal. Like, they could have had all these different elements going on, and it just not make any sense in the end. Mm -hmm. But they made it all work. And they even, even the part, like, when they just randomly brought in the guy's mom, even they made that work. And it was showing us that... I'm going, it's Rusty's mom. I'm like, it no, was. it's not. You're like, yes, it is. I'm like, no, it's not. It's the suspect's mom. And you're like, oh. But that's who they were insinuating, though. No, they weren't. No, no, no. That's what I mean. I mean. Their I lives mean, were very that's similar. That's what I mean. But that this is essentially how Rusty's mom is. They don't know where Rusty's mom is. No, but they'll find her. No, she won't. No, they won't. Under a rock somewhere. She gonna be dead. She I'm just be. If she turns up dead. That would be an interesting story. What are we rating this? I'm rating it a 10. A 10. A big, huge, giant, gold and silver 10. With studs on it just and stop. rubies just and stop. emeralds. <laughs> We're predicting I just gave for next season. If Sharon wants to adopt Rusty and he's still 17, she, she has to get his mother's consent. And what if she goes, Well, she's abandoned mom, but like if she has to like get her to like... Re like, turn over her parental rights like she did with Daniel Dunn. Yeah, but he doesn't... What if... Just... 
I'm letting what you, okay, I'm if, sorry. I'm letting you talk. What if um she has to you turn find Italian. this woman. <laughs> I am Italian. <laughs> she finds us she goes looking for her and she turns up dead. I would love that episode. I would love that episode. What if? I would love that episode. What if I love that episode? I think there's going to be dead people. I think, I think we're going to solve yeah. cases. There's going to be detectives. There's going to be detectives there. There's going to be Rusty. Rusty is going to be there. Buzz will be there. Yeah. Sharon, Rusty's still going to be living at Sharon's. I want to find out what Sharon's daughter's name is. Maybe we'll find out next season. Because right now her name is Worth, No Name. Her name is No Name. I went to the um, desert on a horse with No Name. She was a um, horse. It'd be interesting if they did bring back Sharon back. Sarah might show up season three. That actress, Kira Sedgwick, who was fantastic in all the roles she's ever done. Because I feel like the Philip Showcase is not over. No. I don't think and since either. they've drawn it out for two seasons, why would they just not do anything else with it? And just, like, it's annoying oh, Phil Stroh was found uh, guilty Dead. of found being, hanging uh, in his cell. being a jack wagon. It could be something, though. If they did find him dead, and then they start investigating that, that they have to investigate that now. No, because I'm so sick and tired of Philip Stroh. Oh my. Dead That's or alive. Done. Which I think uh, Duff is kind of feeling the same way now. Like, we've had essentially the they same storyline, especially with Rusty for the past few seasons. the now. horse about it's six still times dead. now. Um, they've cut open its stomach and have seek shelter inside. <laughs> On Keep an ocean. <laughs> On an ocean. They're going to throw it over sooner or later after they make some glue to keep the wood together <laughs> on the boat. It's it's done. It's done. It's done, guys. It's done it up here. Let's put it that it's way. It may here. not be done uh, in the, the land of show, major crimes, in the land of the writers. It's done up here. But it's done with every... I'm pretty sure everybody feels the same way. Let's get done with it already. Philip Stroh is something from the past, so let's leave him there. Bring in something new. We should have left him at the closer. We really should have. They should have been the done at the should have been closed on the closer. Well, the show will be back sometime in June, which means we'll be back with minor incidents sometime in June, but... Sorry. We'll, yeah, I'm sorry. I know you're <laughs> all going to miss us. No, you won't. We will be back from uh, Chisoli and Giles. Uh, also known as Rizzoli and Giles. <laughs> February 25th. So we'll be back in June with minor incidents, but like I said, come back and see us for... Uh, and the Giles. detective, The detective and, and the doctor. The doctor. I'm going to miss you guys so much. Uh, thank you also for hanging out with us during our live hangout, which is coming on right after this show. Oh, well, it'll be on before this is published, so person. maybe we'll... No, there won't be anybody there. We'll talk to ourselves for a while <laughs> and answer uh, Cosmo questionnaires. I feel like people just watch it, and they don't actually want to no. join it. They just watch us yeah, talk some to of them each do. other some people, and act like jerks. Some people do talk back. I had some at the West Coast airing. I had quite a few people. So, um, yeah. So, thank you for uh, hanging out with us then, which is in the future. But in the past, when I post this... No, just, just stop. But... Just... just... A lot. Very, a lot. Very, very a lot. <laughs> Good job. This episode, we had the continuation of last episode. We found out who was writing the letters, and finally we caught him in this episode. And it's a big... FD, and then Rusty's on the stand, and he goes down, and there's Jerry Ryan. This is going nowhere, this synopsis. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Have a good, we're gonna have a good hiatus. <laughs> so, <laughs> I feel like that's how your thought process always is, though. It's always our. By the way, I'm really loving your comb over right now. I was, you know, I talked to Joe Biden about his, and he really, it seemed to work for him. I'm going way too fast right now. Anyway. Why are you messing it up? This comb over was perfect. No, it wasn't. You yeah, know when you I'm posted on Thursday? I'm going to try to do it tomorrow. Why can't you do it like you used to? Because I work now. At four o'clock. That is late. And it's 530.